let's talk about Rihanna. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh, Rihanna. Uh-huh. Rihanna is one of the biggest pop stars alive. No one disputes that. But I don't think it really sinks in just how successful she is. What pop star has the most buzz right now, at this moment in time? Possibly Kanye, or Taylor Swift, or Drake, or Beyonce? I honestly wouldn't necessarily pick Rihanna, because this is not really a peak year for her the way that 2007 or 2012 were. But that's because Rihanna doesn't need peaks, she's just always there. It's hard to even comprehend the staggering, mind-destroyingly insane amount of hit songs Rihanna has gotten onto the pop charts in her 11-year career. The now that's what I call music people could have just made compilations of Rihanna hits for the last decade, and they wouldn't even have to slow down their output. In January of this year, with major fanfare, she released Anti, her first album in four years. Don't assume that means she was taking some time off, though. Except for a brief period in 2014, she has continued to pump out single after single after single. She doesn't seem like that, right? Well, there's a big reason for that. For the most part, those songs aren't very good. Of her many, many hits, Rihanna has maybe released two songs in the past six years that I'd really want to listen to a second time. They just seem to exist as a constant background noise. Catchy enough to get into heavy rotation, but not memorable enough to make any lasting impact. So that's a big reason why, despite all the hype for the new album, I couldn't really be bothered to care. I mean, look, here's the big new single she has, Work. Yes, thank you, that was a clip of Rihanna performing in the role of Helen Keller in the climactic scene of The Miracle Worker. She is finally gonna get that Tony this year, I can feel it. It's, yeah, it's, it's a nothing of a song. It's only noteworthy aspect is that Rihanna seems to be singing it after having a root canal. So if you excuse me, we're gonna review two Rihanna songs not from that album. Because who cares? Instead, we're gonna look at two other songs written for Rihanna by other artists. Because Rihanna is such a powerful force that everyone eventually gradually winds up in her orbit. The two Rihanna songs we'll be looking at today are This Is What You Came For and Cheap Thrills and not one of the three other hit Rihanna songs I could be covering right now. Told you she was everywhere. You know what? Usually these Versus episodes, I will save my final judgment for the end of the episode, but you know what? Why wait? Let's listen to them both right now and come up with a final verdict. Play them. Eh, it's alright. Yeah, that's pretty okay. Look, I don't know what to tell you, they're Rihanna songs. With increasingly rare exceptions, they're gonna rate a 6 out of 10. And yes, that includes one of them that isn't even technically a Rihanna song, we'll get to that. I don't find either of these songs particularly interesting, except for the fact of the people behind them. Now take the one that actually has Rihanna on it, which arguably isn't a Rihanna song either. This Is What You Came For is a song by Scottish DJ Calvin Harris, with Rihanna as featured vocalist. And I've said this before, I have never, ever liked Calvin Harris. I feel so close to you right now. For a long time, he represented everything I didn't like about modern dance music. I don't get how you're supposed to dance to this. That said, lately he does seem to have finally found something that resembles a groove. And maybe I underestimated him. He, he definitely holds a unique place in modern dance music. In a genre where most acts don't have any sort of recognizable image and even use gimmicks that hide their identities entirely, Calvin Harris is one of the few producers who seem to aspire to old school pop stardom. And even occasionally sings with his own voice. We fell in love. As the leaves turn brown. Although he really shouldn't, he sings like ass. And, we... and then we have the opposite of providing a recognizable face. Let us now look at the strange case of Sia. The pop singer who simultaneously became huge and disappeared from the public eye. The pop star who wasn't there. In case you don't know, 
She was a former indie singer who did some work behind the scenes as a songwriter for other artists. A fluke appearance on a David Guetta song led her to release some pop songs of her own, which launched her into the mainstream. But confusingly, her push for fame has coincided with her shunning attention, performing with her back to the audience, hiding behind giant wigs, not appearing in her own videos, and just in general doing everything to hide her identity. Isn't that crazy? What kind of performer does that? Yes, yes, I'm aware of the hypocrisy. For the record, what I do is totally different. I have an excellent reason I don't show my face. I'm in the witness protection program. I pissed off some people in the Cambodian mob a while back, so I have to lie low. For Sia though, there's no reason to hide herself. She dressed and performed like a normal person for years. We know what she looks like. You picked up your gimmick too late, goddammit. So those are the major players. Let's look at the songs. One is about leaving the club with someone. One is about going to the club with someone. They're, they're, they're pretty similar. This is what you came for is basically just another club. Anthem. The plot is, you go to a club, there's an amazing woman there, you go home. But who is this amazing woman that Rihanna is singing about? This amazing, wonderful woman who is so stunning that lightning strikes every time she moves. You got that James Dean, Dean, Dean. Before we continue, you should know that this song was written by Taylor Swift because this is the clusterfuck of every single popular artist alive episode. In fact, this song has spawned one of the year's more bizarre spectacles of showbiz drama. One so amazing and dramatic that I would even dare call it Taylor's second biggest feud of the year. After that whole thing with Kanye. I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Why? I made that bitch famous. God damn! Yes, that is a naked wax sculpture of Taylor Swift that Kanye West put in his video while claiming that he's going to fuck her because he made her famous. Amazingly, Taylor Swift has come out the bad guy in that one. Anyway, Calvin Harris is one of the many, many people Taylor Swift has dated. And after the breakup, Taylor revealed that she ghost wrote this song. This apparently pissed off Calvin Harris a lot. I'm not sure why. I think maybe Taylor was trying to say about Calvin Harris. I made that bitch famous. God damn! Because otherwise, I don't see why Taylor Swift wanted credit for this. It's not like it's some masterpiece of songwriting. It doesn't even have verses. It has one verse. Wow, you earned every speck of that writing credit, huh? And the thing is, I wasn't that surprised to find out who wrote it. Because the first time I heard this song, I thought it was Taylor Swift. Rihanna just has this way of absorbing the mannerisms of her writers. For example, Sia. I saw the life inside so Sia is one of Rihanna's writers, and they pretty much sounded exactly like each other for years. And her current big hit, Cheap Thrills, is a prime example. Come on, come on, turn the radio on, it's Friday night, and I won't be long, gotta Cheap Thrills was also written for Rihanna. Rihanna eventually ended up passing on it. Perhaps it was too generic even for her. There's really not a lot to it. In essence, it sounds like the most basic, average, simplest Rihanna song ever. Right down to using the famous four chords of pop. Pop song chords. This joke has run its course! Just like I wasn't surprised to find out Taylor Swift wrote This Is What You Came For, I wasn't surprised to find out that Cheap Thrills was written for Rihanna, because it is such a Rihanna song. Island beat, Caribbean accent, a remix with Sean Paul? Gee, who does that remind me of? Surprised Sia didn't just name the song Cheap Thrills A A Na 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 Ella Ella. And there's not much to the lyrics either. It's about partying when you're broke. Of course, I'm fine with that. I'm on record for really liking songs about broke partying. I mean, goddamn, we already have a ton of songs about partying expensive clubs, drinking expensive booze, and I'm just like, well, why do you need to party? You're rich! I'm sorry, were you too bored with how fancy your mansion was? Leave the partying to the people who need it. At the very least, it's more lyrically together than this is what you came for. Like, for example, what is with the title? I 
feel like I'm being accused of something. Baby, this is what you came for. Lightning strikes every time she moves. Look, a hot chick. This is what you came for, isn't it, you pervert? You don't know what I came for, goddammit! Get off my ass! And this is a big problem for me. The chorus is in the third person, yet the verse is in the first person. We say nothing more than we need. I guess even Taylor's realized that it doesn't sound right to sing Everybody's Watching Me, Lightning Strikes Every Time I Move. Or she's officially so up her own ass that she refers to herself in the third person now. Bring Taylor Swift a peeled grape! But no. For as much stink over who wrote this, the lyrics are not why this song is successful. Hell, the melody is not why it's so successful. Every big song needs something that makes it stick out, something that catches the ear. This is what you came for has one real hook, and it is all Calvin Harris. See there, that, that hook, those subtly off robo vocals, that's the hook. But for me, the real earworm, the thing that really digs into you, is this part right here. Did you hear that? Play it again! Started out high, then went low! That's not how it's supposed to work! You start low, then you go high! That's how pop songs work. What are you doing? I'm not joking. That drop is a searing splinter in my brain. It makes me feel like I'm going crazy. It's like when you see that picture of Michael Buble sticking his corn on the cob in his mouth and first like it's a goddamn hot dog. No, 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 you're doing it wrong, goddammit! But hey, doing it wrong isn't necessarily the wrong thing to do. I mean, it got my attention. Cheap Thrills does not have anything like that to make it subtly wrong or even all that interesting except for one thing, and that is Sia herself. Sia is one of the great voices of the 2010s, and that does a lot of work. If Rihanna sang this song, I'm not sure it would have been as big. I mean, look, Sia even deigned to appear in the video. See, there she is in the... in the far... over... just... over to the left... just... move the... Really, even without the weird face thing, has there ever been more of a disconnect between Singer and their songs than Sia? At least, you know, Pop Sia? Of course Sia didn't intend to write this for herself. Does, does anyone really believe that Sia is some kind of crazy party girl? Gets excited to get dressed up and go out? Gotta do my hair, put my makeup on. It's Bullshit! You don't even need to put makeup on! You don't have a face! In a weird way, Sia's lack of identity is her identity. Her album is called This Is Acting, so that you know it's not really an expression of her soul or anything, it's an act. Even Daft Punk have an identity, they're robots. Sia is an empty vessel out of which music comes. Which, honestly, is also kind of true of Rihanna nowadays. But Sia brings that weird tension that makes it work, otherwise it would probably just be another Rihanna song. I guess that's why I prefer it to the actual Rihanna song we have. But actually this song isn't necessarily bad either. Yeah, both of them are growers. I, I like them a little more every time I hear them. And who knows, maybe by the end of the year they'll make the top 10. But still, I, I kind of want something more, you know? Is okay really what we're shooting for here? Can't we do better than this? If I was you, I'd wanna be me too. I'd wanna be me too. I'd wanna be me too. Oh, right, I forgot about the rest of this year. Y you know what? Never mind. Considering how bad this year has been, I'll take half finished Rihanna cast offs. Works for me.